Hey everyone, it's Lisa and today is Wednesday, hump day. And today I thought we would discuss what I was talking about the other day when I mentioned not, it's not that you don't care what other people think. Matter of fact, it's not really that at all. What I wanna to talk to you about is trying to be your own best friend, trying to make decisions on your own. I want to explain to you a few things that I have realized that have helped me so much. What I'm really talking about is life decisions or big decisions or goals or big moves that you might be making at work. It's natural for us to want to ask other people for their advice, especially me. I ask my parents advice about everything. I used to do it a lot more than I do now because as I have been growing and really focusing on my goals and the person that I want to be, the more I get into and learn about myself, the more I realize you really just don't need to ask other people for their opinion. Okay, the first thing I wanted to kind of get into is, remember the other day we were talking about paradigms and how each one of us is raised in a different situation. We're raised by different families, different circumstances, different values in different parts of society, different countries. We're just raised in all these different ways and society is different. So we are all just so different in how we believe reality to be. We're all, you know, raised with these paradigms and that goes into your decision-making. Even if someone that really cares about you or really has your best interest at heart, I'm not gonna say family, I wanna talk about family a little bit different because your family is probably gonna have just about your same paradigm because they were the ones that raised you. I'm talking about your parents and like your brother or sister. But say a really, really good friend who is raised, like I'll, one of my best friends was raised totally different than I was. She was raised in a family that was more dominated by the mom, which was just like totally different for me. But she is going to have a different idea of the way things are and the way things should be. You ask someone's opinion on something, they cannot help but reflect back their insecurities onto you. And then in return, when they reflect their insecurities onto you, it might bring up your insecurities and make you insecure about this decision where you weren't even insecure about it before. Maybe you were just off the cuff asking them. And then it changes your mind, it changes your direction. Like say before we decided to buy a house. And really, I, my parents are kind of an exception because they, we see each other so much and I discuss so much with them that they really are in tune with how I think. They say I go to my parents and I say, you know, John and I want to build a new house. And they can't help but, in their minds, they were raised to think, you should stay there. You don't need to risk this economy. You don't need, you need to stay in that house that's almost paid for. You know, you need to stay. You don't need to take any risk. I'm sure that that was probably their first instinct, but because they know me so well and because I talk to them so much and because they knew, you know, John and because they just are so in tune with our family, they were really, really able to help me with some decisions. They knew, you know, what was important to me and what wasn't. They know, you know, the different direction I've gone or we had gone as far as wanting, you know, we had a big yard. We did not want a big yard. They would never live in a place like this. They would never live in a place where the homeowners, you know, we're still waiting to get approved to put another palm tree in our yard. I mean, we already have them all over, but we have to get 
The one extra palm tree that we want to add, we have to get that approved. Privacy is very important to them. It's really not to us. We like having action going around. Like I love after dinner, I'll go sit on the front porch and I just love seeing the people walk by, seeing the kids go by. So we just have different, you know, likes, even though, you know, they raised me, they know how I have evolved. And so they were able to advise me, but that's not always going to be the case. So if I had come to all of you who know me pretty daggone well, and I were to ask you, how do you guys feel about me moving into this house? You know, it's gonna be close to other houses. I would have gotten so much, you know, mixed messages. It may have made me insecure, especially if I were not as old as I am, if I had not gone through the same life experiences. And I think people are just at different stages. Being on YouTube for all of these years has really helped me you know, there for a long time, I would try to do what everybody wanted me to do. Oh, Lisa, I love you in red lips. So then I would do the red lips. Oh, I miss your nude lips. You're known for nude lips. I liked you with your short hair. And then when I cut my hair short, I miss your long hair. That's just who you are. So I learned pretty quickly that you have to do what you want to do. And if you ask other people, they are only going to give you their life experience in an answer. Thinking yesterday, I was kind of in my mind preparing for this video, and I was thinking of things that I could easily guide someone in a negative direction when it would not be necessary. Even something as little as someone asking me, should they cut bangs? Okay, how many times have I tried bangs? I love bangs. I think they look so feminine and soft and I've tried it, I've tried it. I have a cowlick and I have frizzy hair. I cannot wear bangs. I cannot style them. So my first instinct to anyone is gonna be, oh no, uh-uh, do not cut bangs. It was the worst thing I've ever done. Well, they may have the kind of hair that would just lay so pretty and it may just flatter them so much and I may make them change their mind. Going dark with your hair. Okay, you remember when I did my hair dark, I instantly, I mean instantly hated it and I started going back light. So that is like, that scarred me. And what scarred me the most is not trying the dark hair, it is the damage that it does going from dark back to blonde. So I am very emphatic. When someone even mentions going dark and they have blonde hair, it's not that I don't think they may enjoy the dark hair, it may look beautiful on them, but the risk of them wanting to go back blonde, that's what I think of. So I am going to definitely negatively influence their decision. My insecurities are gonna come out and I may change their decision. Then I was thinking, you know, I've told you guys, I love being alone. I love my alone time. I have never liked shopping with other people unless I'm like out of town and you're just kind of doing that shopping where you're just walking in and out of stores and you're just kind of observing and you're really, or like if I'm with my mom, you're really spending time with that person doing something, but you're really not shopping. I am the kind of person Matter of fact, Brooke met me at Target and Home Goods. I think it was last week, and it, it drives me crazy. She has to look at every single thing. Every time we go to Target, I am at the checkout, and she calls me and wants to know where I am, and I am just ready to get the heck out of there. I just prefer shopping by myself. Now, when it comes to trying on clothes, I really don't like trying on clothes at all. I would rather come home and try them on. But if I do, I don't need anyone else's opinion. But I will hear, you know, other people going out and asking the sales clerk their opinion, or I can see asking, and that's another thing I wanna get into is like your husband, or, and I can even see like asking my mom or 
really my mom more than even Brooke because my mom knows what I like. Brooke, when I ask her opinion, she is still at the point where she will give me, I don't know, I have to admit, Brooke has gotten better. It was funny, a couple weeks ago, I had a photographer come over and take some pictures that you guys will eventually see, and Brooke was here while he was taking pictures. We did it here, and I was doing like this to my hair because you guys know I like big, messy hair. Well, Brooke was coming over and straightening out my hair, and I was like, that is so, that's like a profound point right there. Even though Brooke loves me, she basically knows what I like, and she wants the best for me, she was going to do something different. So, if you just really think about it, say you're coming to, you know, your parents, your best friend, and you are trying to make a big decision, and it's something that you've really, it's a big passion of yours, but it's not a big passion of theirs, and it's a great big decision that you have really, really been thinking about and thinking about, and you have pretty much come to a decision that you feel good about, and then just off the cuff, you feel like you probably need to ask a few people. Well, they're going to answer that with all of their life experience, their view of reality. Then they start, and they may have the best of intentions. They, you know, really want to save you like I would with the bangs or, you know, the dark hair. And they start coming up with all of the negatives that they think that is going to cloud your decision, is gonna pull out some insecurities that you have, and it's just going to keep you from making your best decision. I really feel the way that you make the best decision is you focus on that thing, you kind of brainstorm about it. I'm a big proponent of the pros and cons, and my parents laugh at me because I always say, what's the worst that can happen? And that is a big thing with me. What's the worst that can happen? So sometimes it's really good not to even discuss your true dreams and desires with other people because they could squash them. They could squash your dreams. And I know with John, I don't discuss every single thing I do with him, especially like I used to discuss video ideas with him and I've learned he is going to come at that from a different mindset and he's not even in this world. He doesn't know what you guys want to see. If it is something that I want to please you with, like you guys didn't like it when I removed the mirror that was behind me upstairs. Well, I liked it, but because I, in that scenario, I, you are my, what's most important, my videos. And so I listened and I made a spot for the mirror. But when it comes to like downstairs and everywhere else in my house, it's going to be what I like. And think about that too, like with home decor. I have been watching so many videos, you guys. I want to do more home decor videos because I feel like there is an in-between that's kind of missing you know, between the DIYers, which I'm not, I've been there, I've done a few, a few things that turned out well, I've done some things that didn't turn out too well, and you guys know I love to sew, so I love doing stuff like that, but that's just not where I am right now, yet I'm not in a seven million dollar home. So I look forward to sharing different things with you guys, and they're not going to be everyone's cup of tea. Even the highest end furniture stores in this town, places I would never have thought of going, I have been going into because I thought even if I can find a tray or a candle or a soap or something that I like, it's worth it. I went into one the other day, it was gorgeous, gorgeous. It was kind of like a modern, chic, coastal everything in it was very light and i was i was looking for a dark cabinet and it was just beautiful i mean lamps that were fifteen hundred dollars but i didn't like a single thing in there so it doesn't mean that it's good or bad 
It doesn't mean that it's right or wrong. It just means that we all have different tastes. And the other day I watched a video, it was a lady, it was actually a TED Talk, and I will put it down below because it should be pretty recent. Matter of fact, I sent it to my mom so I know I can find it. And she was kind of a Judge Judy type lady. And I just stumbled upon it and it was like tips for happiness or tips for a happy life or something like that. And something made me click on it. I was, it was actually one morning upstairs before I got Will up for school. And one of the things were take risk, take risk. One of the biggest regrets that people have when they are sick on their deathbed is they think about all the things they wish they had done. And that really, it was profound to me. And it's really, it just kind of, um, I've already kind of got that in me a little bit more now than I ever have. I have just, like I say, what's the worst that can happen? John has really come around too. He has seen the change in me. He has taken some risk that he probably was scared to take. We have taken risk and he has seen the payoff. And I'm so proud of him. I'm so proud of him and I'm so proud of us for doing that. I don't want you to ever risk your life savings. I always want you to really, really, really think about things, the pros and the cons, and that could be you know, with a job or anything. There is a time to look at others for inspiration. That is important. You want to look at, like say I want to look at other YouTubers or I might want to look at other people doing home decor and I want to look at them for inspiration. That is important. I'm not saying that it's not. I'm just saying look at them for inspiration and then make up your own mind. Sometimes a lot of people, they like other people's opinion. I have never been like that as much. The only thing I will do is, like I was telling my mom this when we were talking about this video, like if I go into a, the last time I went into a bakery and I wanted to get something for my parents, I went in there looking for some treats, I'll ask them, what sells the best? What are you known for? What's your best seller? Or if I go to a restaurant, like sometimes I will pick up um, Mexican food for them and I'll call and just pick it up. What is your most ordered appetizer? Then the next time I might say, what's your favorite appetizer? Just because I know my parents are like, they like to try new things. So that's something I will, you know, ask others opinion, but I think you get it. I think you get what I'm trying to say here. I think what really just got me the most is when I heard that other people can't help but bring their insecurities into it. And I thought that is so true. That is so true. Okay, I'm gonna try to start doing videos all over the house here. So it was easy for me to grab my bag. I had switched into this Chanel 19 bag. Just such a good bag, such a good bag. It's so soft, it has a pocket on the outside. It's stuffed with receipts. I need to empty it. It is just one of my favorite, favorite bags. And this is the middle size. Then I have my sunglasses. I will show, I'm gonna eventually do like a tour of each room, like each little section, and I'll show you how I'm keeping my sunglasses now. But when I was organizing my sunglasses, I had forgotten about these. They're, um, oh, Versace round sunglasses. See, sunglasses are another thing. Some people would probably never want to wear big, crazy sunglasses. I just think those are so pretty. And I have on a vest. I took the tags off of it, but you guys probably remember when I got these from Zara. It was when I lived in the rental house. And then, here, let me see if I can back this up so you can see my whole outfit. Yay, you can see it. So I've got on my, I keep wanting to say, are they, there's something pop, boom pop, or booty pop, bomb pop. <laughs> I've got on my bomb pop jeans, the best, the best jeans ever, probably my favorite jeans. I've got on my Jimmy Choo slim bags, and let's talk about this baby here. Remember I told you I was looking for a different piece to put here? Well, I'm working with 
Tracy, and she is my decorator. And even with Tracy, she knows my taste, I know her taste, and we'll send each other things back and forth, and we'll give it a thumbs down. I sent her a picture of a, like a bookshelf the other day. She said, I hate it. <laughs> and then we keep doing that until we get on the same page. So it, it just, even if you have the same taste, you're gonna disagree sometimes. So she was thinking, and I was thinking too, that we wanted something much bigger and more substantial, but we knew that, of course, the door needs to be able to open, and you, you don't want to walk right into the chest here. And with the molding, you either want to come right below or you want to come above. So, and then I wanted to get a dark piece because I wanted it to match my dining room table. I kind of wanted to, you know, bring this in together. And so I set out, I think it was last Saturday? Yeah, maybe last Saturday. And I wanted to find a piece. So I went, I found something that was really expensive. I mean, it wasn't that expensive. I'll go ahead and tell you it was $3,000. And that is, it's relative. It's nothing to some people, it's a lot to others. And I went back to a store, you guys, it's a resale store, it's called Home Again. And I went through there, I saw one piece, I sent a picture to Tracy, uh, I don't like it, I don't like it. Then I saw, I did not want an open, you know, like just the two things, I wanted it basically closed. Hey Chanel, you gonna see everybody? And so this piece was there and it has a wine rack. I've got it put up in the closet, but those two shelves have a wine rack that go in it that we took out. This is definitely not finished. I've ordered something fabulous to go right here behind it. The tiger is going in my dining room, my kitchen dining room over there. I've just got this. Monday. Was it Wednesday? Yeah, just got this Monday. John went and picked it up and we actually took the one that I had, the lamps, snake lamps, and my old nightstands. Is that it? We took all of those and we took them and consigned them at the consignment shop. So I was just stoked to find this. I love it. It has so much character. I love it. I haven't even got anything in the drawers yet, but they're very nice. Like they're not you know, rickety drawers, like some of the stuff that I've gotten. And the top was kind of yucky when I got it. I didn't see it, John said it was, because he went and picked it up by himself. And he used a magic eraser. And the top is now beautiful. And so I went over the whole thing with the magic eraser. Okay, the lamp, you guys, this might, I hope this video isn't too long. The lamp, is something that probably a month ago, it was the last time I got my hair done, so it was probably three, three or four weeks ago, I saw a store and it was in a, they do interior design, and I went in there and I was looking around and everything was, you know, pretty fancy, and I saw that lamp up on a shelf and I loved it. I mean, it was just like, I mean, I just loved it. And I looked at how much it was. It was more than I have ever even thought about paying for a lamp. And I really didn't have a place for it. So then I went back there with my mom to order my chairs for the kitchen dining. And I saw it again and I was like, mama, look at this lamp. And she was like, oh, you know, my parents would, they would never have that lamp in their house, but they know what I like. And so when Tracy and I were talking about redoing this, she said, you need a big, dark statement piece with a big, fabulous lamp. Well, I was like, oh my gosh, I know. And it makes my stomach turn because I'm so excited. I know the exact lamp. And so I had already deleted the picture. So I found it in my deleted pictures and sent it to her. And she said, yes. She said, I don't care how much it costs, get it. So I went over there the same day that John was picking up the piece of furniture and they were running a sale 25% off. So I did get the lamp at 25% off. So it was like meant to be. 
and I am just so excited and I love it. I love it. Now this poor baby is off of my, I think you guys told me it was a Monstera and Tracy told me I needed two or three more, but I could not scalp him that way. So I'm just going to leave this in here for the day. And then I picked this up at World Market a couple weeks ago. So there is this story. And I have, I'll tell you, when you guys, when I take you through again, I might do it room by room because so much has changed. So we'll just leave it there for now. And let's see, anything else? Oh, my accessories. I put in, this is such a... I hate to say lazy, but it's lazy in the best way, which I love that. I put in the other little huggies that I got from Bobble Bar, and I have loved the way they all look together. And I sleep in them, I shower in them. They have been fabulous. Dean Davidson rings. I just love wearing two of these. He, his advertising just got to me. I love it. And my watch and my Dean Davidson necklace. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. I sure did. I, it's gonna be a nightmare to edit. I'm gonna have to probably edit a lot out. I've been talking for 46 minutes and 10 seconds. <laughs> oh, and my makeup is exactly like my makeup in my Nordstrom uh, Get Ready With Me. The only thing I did is change out the lip liner and the lipstick. So if you like my makeup, go check out that video. I'll see you guys on Friday. Bye-bye.